Hey y'all, happy second day of the feast of the entrance of the Mother of God into the temple. My reflection today I've entitled, Are You Born Again? Are You Born Again? How do you feel about that language? Born again language. You know, the language is biblical. It's from John chapter 3, where Jesus is having his discussion with Nicodemus, and he says, you must be born again. Don't be surprised that I say to you, he says, that you must be born again. No one who is not born again is capable of entering or even seeing the kingdom of God. Obviously, we should be comfortable with this language. The language of rebirth is used throughout the New Testament. What exactly is this? And what does it mean to be born again? You know, the, the language, though it is biblical and therefore is fundamental to the church, uh, has been co-opted by uh, the Protestant revivalists of the 18th century in the First Great Awakening and then later in the Second Great Awakening in the 19th century and since. This language, being born again, has been emphasized uh, in the Protestant revivalist movement. But it's, not, it's, it's been used in a way that is not traditional, not the way that, that Christians have traditionally thought about being born again. It really is being used now uh, in common parlance as a description of a conversion experience that proves authenticity of faith, uh, totally disassociated from any sacraments. So there are certain measures that um, you have to have to show uh, that you in fact are truly converted, that you have first uh, a deep conviction of sin, uh, and that, uh, you, that leads to a despair of your own works, uh, which leads to a turning to God for your s salvation and faith in Him, which leads to uh, a conversion experience, which leads to a sense of peace uh, that comes from the Holy Spirit, etc. This paradigm, this conversion paradigm, became very um, central to Protestantism from the 18th century on. And it became kind of the definition to know if someone was a true Christian or had received grace, if they had grace. Those uh, experiences, those spiritual experiences, uh, are very, very important. But do they constitute being born again? The language is very clearly uh, connected in Jesus' teaching to the waters of baptism. Jesus, in fact, describes being born again uh, by being born of water and the Spirit. So it's not just something that Jesus is, is describing. Being born again is not just something that happens spiritually apart from water uh, and apart from the sacrament of baptism. In fact, we are born again in the font. Our baptism is not just, uh, uh, the church's baptism is not just water. If it was just water, it would not be any different from the Jewish ablutions uh, of the Old Testament, which were incapable of actually working inner transformation. Baptism is, uh, the entire beginning of the baptismal service is the priest standing before the water and beseeching the Spirit of God to come down and descend upon the waters, as he did at the time of Jesus' baptism, so that, in fact, this font would become a wa the waters of regeneration would become a place where the miracle of rebirth would take place. So the church is clear. Every baptism is the rebirth or the being born again of the believer. That's what it means to be born again. Now, having said that, we should all wonder and be careful about uh, making affirmations that we are born again. Now, you may say, why, Father? If I've been baptism, baptized, I've clearly been born again, and I should confirm that. True. However, however, there are other texts in the New Testament uh, which should cause us great pause. They should nurture in us a great humility and questions. For instance, uh, 1 John chapter 3, St. John says, Whoever is born of God does not sin. Or 1 John 5, Whoever is born of God overcomes the world. So let me ask you, uh, those of you who have been baptized and know yourselves to be born again, do you experience that? Do you, is your regeneration uh, clear because you're not sinning? Is your regeneration clear because you have a sense in yourself of overcoming the world? Is that your experience? For many who are baptized, that's not the case. This is why we have so many absolutely pathetic Christians who have been baptized 
but have no evidence of uh, being regenerated. This is why we have so many sad and pathetic orthodox, uh, people who have been put into the font and at the same time um, are not faithful in the service of Christ, have no evidence of a sincere trust in Him or obedience, aren't living in the fruit of the Holy Spirit, whose lives are not characterized by love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and gentleness and self-control, but rather are worldly. The secularized lives and the worldly lives of uh, Christians in our nation and in the West is um, infamous and sad. So what, how are we to understand this? Well, for this, this way, being born again uh, is one thing, uh, but living that way is something else. We are all living contradictions, uh, and we have in us an old man and a new man. In fact, if you take the paradigm of birth itself, just think of being born physically. Uh, it's not just the mother who labors. The child also, and this is an image of the spiritual life, the child also goes through great uh, trauma and tears and labor uh, himself or herself as a little baby. St. Paul, for instance, to the Galatians, this is a church that was had started well uh, and yet was faltering. And the, the, the living contradiction between being born again and living according to the old man was uh, atrocious in their lives. And so Paul said to them that he was again in labor with them. That it was as though he was going back, back and participating in the labor of rebirth again. He said, until Christ is formed in you. So what should we do? We who have been born again and yet don't have the full experience, don't have a, a serious sense of being delivered from the world and not sinning. We should do what St. Paul says. Work out our salvation with fear and trembling knowing that it's God who is at work enough to will and to work according to his good pleasure. This is what we have to do, is to live our births, to, to dig deep where the kingdom of God has been established within us, to find our inner hearts, to learn to seek God so that who we have become in, in baptism by virtue of being born of water and the Spirit might come forth and be the dominant uh, direction of our life. You know, there's a, a beautiful homily on this by one of the greatest preachers in the history of the church, the Russian Chrysostom, St. Philaret of Moscow, the great 19th century preacher, whom all the world uh, yearned to hear. Many traveled from east and west and north and south to go hear St. Philaret. St. Philaret's homilies have been uh, the staple of the Slavs for uh, the last 150 years but they're almost non-existent in English. And in fact, I'm very, very pleased uh, to let you know that Patristic Nectar Publications is about to publish uh, the first of what we're hoping will be many volumes of translated homilies of St. Philaret. The first book will be called Sermons on the Spiritual Life, and the first homily in this new book is entitled from St. Philaret, on being born again. So please pray for us and stay tuned. Uh, we're hoping at the beginning of the year uh, that we'll be able to bring forth this uh, first volume of the Sermons of St. Philaret. God be with you. Thank you for watching this video. Do you know that PNP is recording the lives of the saints for every day of the year? It's a massive project and we're halfway done and we need donors to help us complete the project. Would you consider making a donation on our website today? Thank you and God be with you.